Hello everyone and welcome to Morning Coffee Break. I hope everybody's doing good today. It is Wednesday, November 29th already. One more day in November. Currently it's 30 degrees. I think there's only 30 days in November. No? No, that's on December. Uh, I can't tell now because it's turned on December already. I think there's just 30 days in November. Uh, currently it's 30 degrees cold. It's been cold for several days. High today is 46. No chance of rain again and wind at four mile per hour. My garden, uh, I don't know, it got down to 21 or something like that. And I went out there to cover the um, spigot, you know, the, for the water. Um, I, I took an old, uh, I've got one of those styrofoam things, but it was late at night when I, Joy reminded me of it and I'd forgotten to put it on there. I got one of those styrofoam things, but you have to like hook it on and screw it in and all this and that. But but for many years, I've put uh, just an old like hoodie, an old like one that might have holes in it or something, or you know, it just is wore out. And you just take it and wrap it around and then just take the sleeves and tie it on it. And that works as good as anything. So that's what I was doing. And I also was curious to see if slugs would be out, but I, I figured they probably wouldn't be out when it's that cold. So I didn't see any of them. But I felt of the leaves on the Comet Suna and the um, turnips, and they were frozen. They were frozen. I mean, I could have broke them. That's how froze they were. The next day, after the morning after the sun came out, you'd never know anything happened to them. It's, it's weird how they do. But they can survive down to pretty low. You know, if it gets so like 10 degrees or 5 degrees or something, I don't think they'll make it then. But um, I've been letting my turnips get uh, bigger, you know, because uh, we don't have a ton of them out there, so I want to get as much as I can out of them. And uh, the Comet Suna is half eaten up by whatever the slugs or whatever they've been eating on it, so I don't have much of that left. But the, uh, the lettuce needs to grow a little bit more, and the spinach needs to grow a little bit more. But none of it's just, nothing's eaten on them for some reason. You'd think they'd eat on the lettuce if they'd eat on the Comet Suna and the turnips. But they must have favorites. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, let's see. Uh, Joy is going to the uh, her oral surgeon today. She had a tooth break. And it's going to have to be cut out. Because there's, you know, it broke right down at the bottom of it. So... You know, she's been in a little bit of pain, and um, so there's, uh, hopefully everything, pray everything will go fine, you know, and there won't be any complications or anything like that. And, uh, she's really nervous, and if she's nervous, I'm nervous. And if uh, if I'm going to something, she has had to really uh, put up with a lot of stuff that I have not put up with. She's had to go with me to tons of stuff I've had done, you know, operations, 14 of them. Uh, and just hospital visits, emergency room visits, doctor visits, you know, all the time. And she's always nervous when, when I am, and I'm the same way when she is. So um, I'm going to be there for her. Um, I'll probably do like last time, if y'all remember, one time we were there before. Uh, and um, I they, they had a neat place around the back of it. Uh, that I remember I'd be interested to see that's been over a year ago I'd say I'd be interested to see what it looks like now that the leaves are gone because when I went there with her last time it was you know when it was warm out and I couldn't see good down in this little like uh, it, I, I could see a hear a creek down there but I couldn't see it good so I'll probably be able to see everything down there I thought it was just pretty neat I just walked around I I, I can't stand it just to sit there uh, so I walked around outside for a while and then went back in uh, when she was a little bit before she was done. And uh, I'll probably make a video of that walk like I did last time. I, it, you know, I thought it was pretty neat. They had some nice flowers out there at that time, but I don't think there'll be much in the way of flowers uh, this time of year. Okay, uh, and there'll be an Aldi haul today. We were just out of a bunch of stuff, uh, not a bunch. You know, we were out of some stuff we needed, like eggs, different things like that, you know. And uh, we wanted a pizza, um, which we ended up having last night instead of the ham. 
Um, so I've got a haul, an Aldi haul. It's it's not a monster haul, but it's a good one. Um, some good buys too. Um, so tonight we're going to have the spiral ham, mashed potatoes, and green beans. And I'll probably, if she's not feeling well, I'll probably just uh, make some instant potatoes. Or uh, I, I'm not very good at cutting potatoes up, but I could do it. But um, I cut too much off of it when I <laughs> cut the uh, outside off the skin off of it. And there's not much left, it seems like, sometimes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so... <clears throat> So I've got a taste test, and this came from Aldi. Um, not from this haul, but I already had it, and I, I just had it in the fridge, and it got knocked over, and I forgot about it. It's, uh, it's the, they're pure aqua strawberry sparkling water with other natural flavors. Other natural flavors, but it says on the back of it, no, contains 0% juice, so what natural flavor? If it's not juice, natural, I don't know. I'm just cu curious about stuff like that. So anyway, it probably has nothing in it. <clears throat> 12 fluid ounces. Uh, if you drink the whole thing, it just has 10 calories, but zero for 12 fluid ounces. Why wouldn't it have? Oh, it's got three servings per container, so I see. So wouldn't it have three calories? I don't know. <laughs> Total fat, zero. Saturated fat, zero. Sodium, zero. Carb zero, sugar zero, protein zero, two percent potassium for twelve ounces, and six percent if you drink the whole bottle. Um, I will just give it a try here. I'm gonna pour some of it in because I don't want to drink all this. Okay, let me pour some in my mug. Should be enough. I can smell. Uh, like a strawberry smell right now. Take these off, the bubbles might get on my glasses. Hmm. It tastes something like strawberry. I can't say it tastes exactly like strawberry, but, you know, um, how can you make something taste if there's, like strawberry if there's no juice in it? No strawberry juice. So it's, you know. But it does taste something like strawberry. I very rarely, the only time I ever drink anything like this is when I do a taste test. I never drink. I always just drink my plain old water or my coffee. That's pretty much it. However, one of the problems I've had with a lot of these type drinks is it tasted too sweet. Um, this one is not quite as bad. Not quite as bad as some of them. Some of them just you know, even if they don't have any sugar in it, they just taste too sweet to me. I like this one better than some of the Kroger ones I tried. For all I know, the same company could make them for Kroger, but I didn't try it. I've never tried a strawberry one at Kroger. But these are only like, I think it's only like 69 cents, I believe. That's how much it was. Okay, uh, obviously for the nutrition facts, if there's nothing in there, I mean, basically you can't really take much off, so I'll just give it a five out of five for nutrition facts. Uh, it, it's not bad for you at all, but it really, it, it doesn't really do anything, I don't guess, you know, I mean, for you. Had 2%, what I said, potassium. So that's, you know, uh, but it's not bad for you, uh, as far as I can tell. So, five out of five on nutrition facts. Um, I really, it is somewhat better than the ones that uh, that I've tried um, at Kroger. They were a little sweet. I'm gonna give it a four and a half, 
a four and a half out of five. I think it could taste just a little bit more like strawberry, you know, perhaps if it did have some type of strawberry in it. So all in all, you know, it's just, it's not bad for you. <laughs> if you like um, strawberry flavored drinks, you probably, you'll probably like this. Um, Cause it is not as, as strong sweetness to it as some of the others, if that makes sense. Okay, so now let's uh, do the joke of the day. Appointment with my cardiologist. I had an appointment with my cardiologist yesterday and on his door it read eight to five. I left immediately. Why? I have to have better odds than that. <laughs> he thought that, I'm sure they'd put the odds of making it on the door. That guy wasn't too bright. Uh, reporting for duty. A soldier in my National Guard platoon became concerned when the Army insisted, hey, kitty, that he sign up for direct deposit. It's not going to work for me, he said, panicked. Why not, I asked. Because I use my guard pay for spending money. So, for the past 10 years, I've been telling my wife that I serve for free. Oh, you didn't? Oh, you're in trouble, man, but that, that <laughs> I would never do anything like that. I mean, I don't understand <laughs> how he got away with that for 10 years. <laughs> what, how did he do it? Just get a check from him, I guess, and, and go cash a check, I guess. Okay, bad husband. <laughs> Fact of the day, there's a lot of marriages. Las Vegas, on average see slightly over 300 weddings per day. Wow! If you're doing the math, that's roughly 10,000 ceremonies per month and 120,000 per year. Wowee! That's a lot. Okay, now I'm going to find um, a trivia time. Hold on just a second. Okay, I got one. And Kitty, uh, she's looking, she's watching the bubbles in this uh, drink. You see the bubbles in there? She's been eyeing them. She's been going, looking at them, watching them. I think she did that the last time I had a drink like that. I know she likes to have the caps off stuff and play with those, but she likes watching the bubbles go uh, around. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, um, here's the first one. Let me get it going. She's, she's going like that. Kitty, you're funny. Okay, what's the name for cooking just below the boiling point? Braising, parboiling, straining, simmering. I don't think you would be straining something, cooking like. Okay, I say simmering. That's right. You're going to get away from the bubbles? No, that's not for kitties there. She still sees that. She thinks that uh, ready rice is a cat treat. Okay, simmering is a food preparation technique in, by which foods are cooked in hot liquids kept just below the boiling point of water or uh, and above poaching temperature. To create a steady simmer, a liquid is brought to a boil, then its heat source is reduced to a lower constant temperature. Okay, which of the following is a type of bread? Oh my goodness. Tagliatelle, cottage, syra, S-Y-R-A-H, ciabatta, C-I-A-B-A-T-T-A. -T -T okay, I've heard of tagliatelle, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> it could be some kind of pasta. Cottage, never heard of cottage bread. I've never heard of Syrah, but I have heard of ciabatta bread. So that's right. And it says, ciabatta is an Italian white bread made from wheat flour, water, salt, yeast, and olive oil created in 1982 by a baker in Andria, in Adria, province of Rovigo, Veneto, Italy, in response to the popularity of French baguettes. 
Okay, two right. Which of these is an ingredient of Spanish paella? Barley, lentil, rice, pasta. Oh my goodness, I've heard this and I've seen this on some of y'all's, um, I've seen this on some of y'all's um, cooking videos. Oh my goodness. I, I don't know why, I think it's, um, hmm, I don't know if Spain is known for rice. I know there's Spanish rice, but it's not barley, I don't think, and or, or lentil. I'm thinking it's either rice or pasta. I'm going to go with rice. I might be missing. Oh, yeah. So I did pay attention to y'all's videos, see? Paella in Spanish cuisine is a dish of saffron-flavored rice cooked with meat, seafoods, and vegetables originating in the rice-growing areas on Spain's Mediterranean coast. The dish is closely associated with the Valencia region. Paella takes its name from paella, the utensil in which it is cooked, a flat round pan with two handles. Paella is traditionally eaten from the pan. Oh, they had the big pan thing, yeah. Okay, next question. Okay, which of these is a traditional Mexican dish? Butter tart, apple pie, fia joada, F-E-I-J-O-A-D-A, -A, or tacos? That's fairly a no-brainer, I think. It'd be tacos, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, tacos are thought to come from Mexico long before the Spanish arrived. Ancient Mexicans used freshly made soft, flat corn tortillas and gave them fillings like fish and cooked organs. Yeah. It was a staple meal that provided vital nutrients and energy for those who consumed it. Those taco, these tacos didn't contain the cheese, lettuce, sour cream, and tomato that we associate with the meal today. The taco, as we know it, is less than 100 years old. Wow. Tacos were first introduced to the United States in 1905. Mexican migrants were coming in to work on railroads and other jobs and started to bring their delicious food with them. I'm glad they did. Which famous dish was invented in Nashville? Quesadillas, barbecue wings, spicy tacos, hot chicken. I think everybody's heard of Nashville hot chicken. That's right. Uh, hot chicken or Nashville hot chicken is a type of fried chicken that is a local specialty of Nashville, Tennessee. In the United States, in its typical preparation, is a portion of breast, thigh, or wing that has been marinated in a water-based <laughs> kitty. When she's playing with that, she's the bubbles on that. What are you doing? She's yawning, and oh, I should have got that. Uh, this method of preparation originates with African American communities in the United States. Can you get it? Is it? What is it? Can you get it? Say, do you see bubbles? Huh? Kitty, what do you see? Get him. Uh oh, did that scare you? Did that scare you? Something moved over there when I shook the table a little bit. And she, she's having a good time with that. Next question, that's five right. None wrong. Which of these countries produced produces the most spices in the world? France, Italy, uh, France, India, Germany, Uruguay. I, you know what? I I think it's India. I mean, I could be wrong, but I think it's India. Yes. See, I learned from from all y'all's videos and stuff. I always see those fresh herbs that you like crush and stuff man it looks so good ours all come in bottles basically okay uh india is the country with the largest international spice market they are the world's largest producers consumers and exporters of these products turmeric or turmeric coriander black cardamom cumin ginger garlic and cinnamon are some of india's most widely used herbs and spices the nation produced 2,176,908 tons of spice in 2020. 
Wow. And it's increased 5.3% annually since 2014. That is something. So six right. A basic white sauce is made with milk, butter, and what else? Flour, oil, bread, eggs. Did I tell? I hope I told all the countries I did last time. Uh, sometimes I forget to tell the darn uh, choices. Uh, flour, oil, bread, and eggs. Have you had enough of looking at the bubbles, Kitty? Uh, white sauce. I don't think it's eggs or bread. And I don't think it's oil. I think it's flour. That's right. Uh, bechamel sauce is a sauce traditionally made from a white roux, butter, and flour in a 1-1 mix by volume and milk. Bechamel may also be referred to as bechamela, bechamel, or white sauce in the U.S. French, Italian, and Greek bechamel sauces and recipes include salt and nutmeg as a seasoning base. Okay, seven right. Uh-oh, and uh, Atame, I-T-A-M-A-E, is a chef specialized in making what dish? Noodles? Pancakes, miso soup, sushi. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It shows a picture here, but it really doesn't show anything. Uh, mm, mm. Uh, I know y'all will know this, some of y'all, but I'm not for sure about this one. Um, Atame. Um, I want to say noodles, but but I'm probably wrong. Noodles. Oh, it's sushi, so I didn't get a, I'm not going to get a, a, a seven right and one wrong. It's sushi. In the Western world, an atame is often associated with sushi, also referred to as sushi chefs. In Japan, becoming an atame of sushi requires years of training and apprenticeship. After several years of training, an apprentice may be promoted to the position of wakita, which translates to near the cutting board. Okay. I just didn't know that. Which of these ingredients is key to making a bolognese sauce? Bolognese? I guess that's how you call it. Chili pepper, anchovies, mushrooms, meat. I, um, you know, I have seen stuff with this too. And um, I may get it wrong, but for some reason I think it's anchovies. Nope, it's, it just says meat. So I got that wrong. I know there's anchovies in some kind of sauce, but it's not that, I don't guess. Traditional Bolognese sauce is made with a combination of meat, pork, and beef, sometimes veal, and often contains cured pork such as pancetta. To help season it, the meats are cooked in a heavy pot with softly cooked carrots, celery, and onions. Hmm. Okay, I missed that one. I got two wrong, so that's one more we got. A traditional fettuccine alfredo is tossed with what ingredients? Butter and Parmesan cheese, saffron and red wine, cream and white wine, egg and garlic. I don't think a regular uh, fettuccine has wine in it. I, I could be wrong. I don't think it's egg and garlic or saffron. I think it's butter and Parmesan cheese. I got that one right. Fettuccine Alfredo or Fettuccine al burro is an Italian pasta dish of fresh fettuccine tossed with butter and Parmesan cheese. As the cheese melts, it emulsifies the liquids to form a smooth and rich cheese sauce coating the pasta. Okay, so I ended up with eight right and two wrong today. Not too bad. Uh, I just hadn't heard of that that one and I, I messed up on the second one, but that, that's a pretty decent score. I hope you all did good. Let me know. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed this morning's coffee break. If you did, I hope you'll press that like button. Also, subscribe if you haven't already and share this out. And hit that so you get all my videos as soon as they come out. Everybody, I hope you have a great day. And check out the Aldi haul later on, everybody. Bye, everyone, and God bless.